Grace and peace, church family. Blessings on this day our God has made. We are so grateful to gather once again into this sanctuary, into this place of worship. As we gather this day, I invite you to open your hearts and minds on this communion Sunday. Will you pray with me as we prepare to enter into this worship? Oh Lord, our God, who calls us into the deep waters, we say yes to you this day. We say yes and thank you for waking us up on this new day and opening our eyes, our hearts, our minds and spirits to the possibilities of all that you have in store for us. As we enter into this worship, oh Lord, we ask right now that you will anoint us all afresh with your Holy Spirit. Help us to hear your word, help us to feel it in our spirits, help us to have a desire and burning in our hearts to want to serve you as we go forward in this time of worship. Bless those that will help serve this day. Bless our media team, may it all go well. And when it's all been said and done, may we all said it was wonderful to be in your presence once again. So Lord, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for the privilege to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I would like to extend a wonderful welcome to all of you gathered this day. Want to let you know that today is Communion Sunday. So please feel free to gather your juice and your bread so that we can commune together when the time comes. With that in mind, I pray that all of you who are gathering with us for the first time will feel the presence of God this day and be grateful that you're with us. We welcome you to worship. As we enter into this time, may our hearts and mind all be open as we hear the musical prelude from our dear beloved, Brother Tamoya. Welcome to worship. Our opening hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing. Sing a song 
something to it. Just encourage you. We're going to take you to church later. Let's go! All the brothers out there. All my sisters in the struggle. Kill that day! Take that to it! Amen, amen, amen. Till victory is won. Beloved, will you join us in our call to worship as Sister Angie and I lead you? Hear these words. The invitation is given to every person by Jesus Christ. Come to me, follow me, be my disciples. Sister Angie, I invite you to unmute. Didn't hear you, beloved. Let's chat it again. I'll start. The invitation is given to every person by Jesus Christ. Come to me, follow me. Be my disciples. We come to this place, to this time, at the invitation of Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ. We accept the invitation to discipleship. In the name of Christ. As is disciples, we worship and praise God. In the midst of a world where cruelty abounds. We proclaim the God of compassion. In the midst of despair that threatens to swallow up whole lives, whole people. We proclaim the God of hope. In the midst of indifference and apathy. We proclaim the God of love. Come, let us worship together. Share our witness of God's living presence in the world. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. As we gather here in the arbor of your safety, we thank you for the fellowship and family. We ask that you will strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. Lord, would you fill us with your peace so that as we journey onwards, we, we would pour out your love and grace to others. We ask that our soul would catch the wind of your spirit so that we will take your promises to all the hurt. Amen, amen, amen. We'll have a Black History moment at this time. Influenced by his father, a pianist and composer, Dorsey was creating blues compositions by age 20, and by the 1930s had over 500 tunes under his belt, performing with Ma Rainey and others on the blues circuit. I started to work in blues because they were something that the people loved, but most of the people who took that were not Christian people. And I was doing all right for myself, but... The voice of God whispered, said you need to change her. After a personal tragedy, Dorsey penned Precious Lord Take My Hand while grieving over the death of his wife and unborn child. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm lone. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Dorsey wrote as he released himself to God. 
Considered the originator of gospel music, Reverend Thomas Dorsey authored more than 1,000 songs in his lifetime. How sweet and happy it seems, those days of which I dream, when memory be all it now and then. Mahalia Jackson toured with Dorsey, where she made famous his Peace in the Valley. When Dorsey died in 1993, he'd been elected to the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, the Music Hall of Fame, and the Gospel Music Association of Living Hall of Fame. through the ages, gospel, what? What did they say it was? You mean to tell me you don't know that good news? On down through the ages, gospel was good news. Now, if you don't know that, I'll throw you out here myself. Next, we will have an offering song, or offering song, we'll give thanks unto the Lord. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus, man. come on. Hey, 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 come on, please. The Lord, Lord, is good, is good. Come on, all this place. Oh, give thanks. Put those hands together. 
God for he is good as we continue to give us our, our financial blessing just a reminder that second Corinthians verses 9 to 11 said you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God Proverbs 11 22 said a generous person will prosper whosoever refreshes others will be refreshed in Jesus name we have several ways that we could give our offering our first way is to give is to mail or drop off your check off at the church we are located at 227 east lincoln avenue mount vernon new york the second one you could go to www.fumcmvny.org locate the online giving button select the category to which you would like your donation to be found and donate you could give anytime anywhere with the new vanco mobile app if you use the Vanco, uh, the Vanco mobile app, download the free Vanco app from the App Store or Google Play. From there, you can make a one-time don donation or set up your current giving just to set your fund and amount, enter a payment method, and complete the donation. Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord God. As you said, a generous, uh, as our generous Father, thank you that all were created through you and for you. You are before all things and in you. All things exist. The Bible says that we should bring our tithes and offering into your store out and that you will respond by opening the word of heaven and sending down blessing upon blessing. Accept the gift we place before you now. May the peace of God reign in her love. The love of God surround us. The spirit of God empower us and the joy of God uphold us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Then right now there will be a song of praise. I want to be more. I wanna be more. I wanna be more, more like Jesus. Like Jesus. Every day, every hour. I wanna be more. I wanna be more, more like Jesus. Like Jesus. Every day, every step of the way. Oh, I wanna be just like I wanna see just like I wanna live. Just like I wanna give. Just like I wanna be more. I wanna be more like Jesus. Like Jesus. Every day, every hour, I want him to guide me. I want him to guide me. No, no, no. I say and do. I want his love. I want his love to caress me. To caress me all the day through. All the day through. Oh, I want to walk. Just like you. I want to talk. Just like you. I want to cry. Just like you. And I want to die. Just like you. I want to be born. I want to be born. Jesus. Like Jesus. Every day, every hour. I want to walk. I want to walk in the sunlight. In the sunlight. In the sunlight of his love, I want him to lead me, him to lead me with, with a heavenly, with a heavenly light, light from above. Heavenly light from above. To know his grace, just like he, from me so rare. Just like he, see nurse to teach, just like he, gospel to preach, just like he, see a thousand strands, just like he, raise up the dead. Just like he, I wanna be holy, just like he, I wanna be loved. Just like he, then I will be kind. Just like he, and have a mind. Just like he, cast the devil's eyes. Just like he, trust and never doubt. Just like he, oh, I wanna be more. I wanna be more like Jesus. Like Jesus. Every day, every day, every And this good morning prior of elimination living god help us so to hear your word that we may truly understand that understanding we may believe and believing we may follow your way in all faithfulness seeking your honor and glory in all that we do amen the old testament lesson is taken from psalms 138 here read it 
I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he rewards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of mine enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. This is a portion of God's holy word. The gospel will be taken from Luke 5, reading from verses 1 through to verse 11. Those who are able, please stand. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesis, Seret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your net for a catch. Simon answered, master, we have worked all night long, but I've caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From no one you will be catching people. Eleven and last. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. Here in the reading of God's holy word. We'll now have a musical selection. I'm going to live so God can use me. I'm going to live so God can use me. God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Oh, and I'm gonna walk so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna walk so God can use me anywhere, Lord. Thank you. 
Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to live so God can use me anyway, Lord, anytime. Well, beloved, as we gather in this moment to hear a word from God, since God wants to use us, my sermon title today is simply, Let's Go. Will you pray with me? Wonderful, loving Jesus, we bless you this day, and we know that you are calling us to go wherever you want us to go. So Lord, start our hearts in this moment so that we can be obedient and say yes to your will and yes to your way. We want you to use us any way and any time. And so Lord, the only way we could do that is if we go with you. So spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us and stir in our hearts to desire to say yes, to go with Jesus. Amen. Well, beloved, as we gather this day, I have to tell you, I have a favorite cousin I actually call him my brother, cuz, Taz. You might have met Todd when he preached my first celebration of appointment, Reverend Cyril Todd German. And he often has always said, I want to leave, I don't want to leave this world without fulfilling every possibility that God says that I can. I want to live this world with no possibilities left. Can you imagine? living in such a way? Well, I have to tell you, since he said those words, it reminds me that that is something that I really desire. And it was so interesting that at the beginning of this year, as I begin to think about this time and share with you, I'm remembered of the words that God gives me. Usually at the beginning of every year, God will give me a word or a phrase to just encourage me. That becomes my theme for the year. So at the beginning of 2022, this is what God gave me. See, accomplish the possibilities and the opportunities. Well, Lord, can you imagine that? Can you imagine doing what my cousin Todd said? Can you imagine what God said for me that we would to be able to live this world and leave this world with no possibilities yet? Can you imagine with that? frame of mind and with that thought in our heart, what 2022 could be like? Well, beloved, let's go. This morning, my beloved ones, I invite you to hear Jesus calling an invitation to all of us to see and experience all the possibilities and the opportunities and the limitlessness of his grace. If we say yes and accept the one who knows and awaits for us, in this present time, in this moment, you'd be amazed to see what God will do. To do so, I believe that God wants to reveal some things. I believe as we hear the scripture lessons that were read so beautifully by Sister Venice, that there are what I will call four invitations or call that we all need to accept in order to experience all that God would have us to experience to be able to live out all the possibilities and the opportunities and to live a limitless life by his grace and power. However, in order to have these things, we got to go. So the first thing I would say is, let us go join closer to Jesus, the living word. In our gospel lesson this morning, we learned that Jesus' reputation has spread kind of rapidly. Before the point that we meet him in the text, his Fame has spread widely because of the healings that he's done and the way that he's taught. And so now there is a huge crowd following him, the living word. He is the living word of God. John 1 tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning and through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So beloved, in order to do this first thing, we gotta go and we gotta press towards hearing the word of God, the word from Jesus, the one that has the news of the kingdom. That's what the people were doing that day. They were pressing closer and closer to Jesus because they wanted to hear. 
They wanted to understand what this love, joy, peace, and hope, and the healing that he was giving them, how he was transforming their lives. They wanted to continue to experience more of that. And through Jesus being words and action, Jesus offered a gift of freedom and motivated these people to change. And so they came. They pressed towards him and they pressed into him. I want to say today, beloved, that we too, like them, have to receive the invitation and have to press towards Jesus amidst all the things that we're encountering, all the things that we're going through, be it with our family, our friends, our jobs, whatever's going on in the world, we have to do like those folks and press and draw near to Jesus. We have to accept the invitation to draw close because if we don't draw up close, we won't understand and fully experience the living word of God moving in our life the same way or have his power and grace moving in our lives. The beautiful thing is that he never changes. And even now, he is longing for us in this new year to experience the newness, the possibilities, the opportunities that we could have in this 2022 as we draw close to him. I suspect that this day, many of us come with hearts stirred with offering praise and thanksgiving to God, thankful for all the things and excited about these possibilities and opportunities. But I also am mindful that there are others of us that are coming this day with pain and sorrow. Yet regardless of how we come to this time, to this place, to this world, God is inviting us to give thanks to the Lord because for all the Lord has done, the Lord has still brought us through so much and the Lord has been faithful and has showered steadfast love towards us. So we come this day worshiping the one who makes all things new in each of us, each day and every day we live and each year that we encounter. So 2022 is no different. To those then who followed Jesus to the lake of Gesserinet, that day they were seeking more from the living word of God. And Jesus was wanting to give them new life. He wanted to give them new hope. So he got into a boat and turned the lake into a sanctuary with an amphitheater-sized sound system. And he continued teaching these lessons. We should know that every time we give thanks to the Lord our God, and when we come to the Lord with our whole heart, he speaks to us again. Every prayer we utter, every song we sing, every time we worship and experience the goodness of God or read and study our Bible, it's our way of drawing near into the sanctuary of the Lord. And when we do it more and more, it becomes the amphitheater that increases the sound of God's word to our souls. And we engage and we connect with this Lord once again. We accept his invitation to draw closer. And doing so, it strengthens our hearts, it opens our eyes, it expands our faith, it transforms our minds and our spirits to see the possibilities that we may not have seen before when we were so stuck or challenged by our situation. Well, beloved, this day, if you're needing a word from the Lord, the first word I want to let you know is to let's go in Jesus' name. Let's go and draw nearer to Jesus so that we will see and experience all the promises in the word of God. Because he promises again and again, if we draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to us as spoken in James 4. Hebrews 4 16 also says, let us then confidently draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. So let's go on declaring with the psalmist, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart before the gods that will sing praises. I will bow down toward his holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you've exalted your name and your word that we have started to draw close to above everything. And on the day when we call you, O oh Lord, you will answer us and increase the strength of our souls. So beloved, let's draw close and draw in confidence knowing that Jesus, the living word, is waiting for us. Some of us, I would say, like Simon, may have to get over ourselves to do this. And some of us 
have to probably even get past our limitations. The gospel writer said this, when he, meaning Jesus, had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I'll let down the nets. My next thing about us going forward is we have to let go and pass our limitations. Can you see them? Can you see Jesus and Simon having a conversation? This preacher and this fisherman? In Simon's mind, he's probably thinking, you know what? I've been fishing a long time. Jesus may know how to preach, but I sure not how to fish. And I've been out all night with my expertise doing this, and I've come up with nothing. Have you, I wonder, been like Simon? Have you had a moment when you gave all your ability and used all your knowledge and extended all your efforts and resources and the gifting and had no change in a situation? It was like, regardless of what you did, it was unfruitful and useless. Huh. What did you do when you realized that all your efforts were making a difference? Did you pause? Did you stop? Did you give up? Did you have a moment or did you give up forever? Well, this passage tells you no, no, no. When we can't, Jesus can. Have you ever heard the quote from Frederick Douglass that says, if there is no struggle, there is no progress? Moreover, I'm coming to understand that as a believer and as a disciple of Jesus, that it is at the point of our greatest frustration, we surrender. That at the point of our greatest frustration, that the Lord steps in. At the point of our greatest frustration comes with a great blessing from the Lord. It's actually a breakthrough at the point of our greatest frustration. And sometimes, if the truth be told, we don't like to be frustrated. And we don't like when we do all that we do get stuck. But the truth be told, we can only grow when we're at this point. And at this point, if we don't stay open to hear or stay open to learn or to see or know new ways of doings, we won't grow. And we could get stuck in our routines and thinking that it's all about us and do the same thing again and again and again and risk nothing. And I'm convinced that these limitations will hold us back if, we don't learn how to get past them. Now you say, Pastor, that sounds easy. I know it's not. I know it's not easy to risk it all. I know it's not easy to let go of the things that you know and the routines that you've done that has brought you thus far by faith. And I know that it feels like a risk. But if God is calling you, if Jesus is calling you or challenging you and tell you that, Past your frustration, there's a blessing. Past your frustration, there's an opportunity. Past your frustration, there are possibilities of things that are greater than you can ever think or imagine. Is it really a risk if God says go? I would challenge you and say no. Notice how Simon's reaction. Did you notice that he was kind of struggling to get past his limitation? He fussed. Master, we worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down my mess. Hmm. Some of us need that in our spirit to get past our limitation. We need, yet if you say so in our spirit. To hear his attitude, to hear his frustration speaks to maybe his lack of unbelief, lack of doubt. But I want you to also hear that in the midst of his frustration and whatever he was lacking, there was a spirit of obedience. And one thing about obedience, it does not require desire. For example, those of us that don't like to work out, we know that if we work out, we'll see the benefits in our body, yes? Obedience is kind of like that. When you obey God in the things that you don't want to, 
kind of like coming to church. Not everyone likes to come to church, but you do know that if you come to church, most likely you would understand what a sacrifice of praise is and get an extra blessing that day. I say, yet he was obedient. I know we don't like to hear that word and we often don't say that word. There's something in that word that when we hear obedient, our spirit rises up and we just resist it from the depths of our souls. And, but I want you to know that there's a difference with biblical obedience. Biblical obedience means that we hear, we trust, and we submit and surrender to God, that we follow him at his word. Often when we think of obedience, we think about what we miss out, but there are benefits to obedience. Obedience is an act of worship to the Lord. Obedience to God yields rewards in our life. Obedience of God proves that we love the Lord with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Obedience to God demonstrates that our faith will be greater than what we know. Obedience is always better than sacrifice. Obedience, beloved, is a way. And when we don't obey the things that God asks us to do, unfortunately, it's disobedience and it leads to sin and death. Through obedience, we experience the uh, blessings of God, the holy living, the opportunity. And so to get past our limits, our, our limitations, we gotta have a spirit of obedience. Someone say, obedience, help me, Lord. And if we're gonna, I would say lastly, get past our limitations then to experience the newness and the boundlessness of our Lord and Jesus. We have to notice that it's Jesus who provides. It's not us. Huh. It's Jesus that provides, not us. Hmm. When I say this, what limitation are you struggling with right now? I would like to say, are you ready to go and let all your limitations down? But my guess is that you might have some fears that might be holding you back. You might have some hesitations to let you go. Well, let Sister Rosa, our beloved Sister Rosa Park, who once said this, encourage you. She said, I have learned over the years that when my mind is made up, this diminishes fears. I want to encourage you to let go of your limitations and make your mind up that you're going to Follow Jesus and do what he says. And as you do that, watch your fears dissipate, watch courage rise up and watch how you do a great things. Or if you think Sister Rosa was too quiet in her approach, you can try uh, Muhammad Ali who said it like this. He who is not courageous enough to take a risk will accomplish nothing in this life. I tell you, letting go past our limitations is a risk. But if we go with the Lord, I promise we'll be beyond blessed and we will be amazed. We will be able to see that our Lord is really limitless. As Peter was beginning to understand this just a little bit, he recognized that the call was to go deeper, not stay where he was. Because they did the amphitheater in the shallow water, but they had to go deeper. This deeper was an invitation to Jesus who called him to the deep. Notice I say it's an invitation. Notice that to go deep, you got to launch out somewhere that you have not been. And oftentimes it's a lot further. Notice that if Jesus is inviting you, Jesus is the living water. And the water that the Lord is inviting you to go deeper on is actually the water that he created. Hallelujah. And when you go deeper, Notice that deeper mm, is not always safe. Deeper sometimes, and the way it was referred to in this text, it, if you take it back to the Hebrew meaning, the deeper had to do with chaos. It takes you all the way back to that time when chaos ran over the waters and things were murky and struggling and not filled with good things. And in this depth, in this deeper, Jesus called him to fish. Hmm. Deeper. Deeper into murky. Deeper into things that you cannot see or imagine. 
one of the things that I understand with this next letting go to go deeper, it's a choice. You have to choose whether or not you're willing to go deeper. And you have to choose whether or not you're going to go in the boat that God gave you. You need to know that your boat is your life. It's filled with your weaknesses. It's filled with your strengths. It's filled with all the things that make you who you are. But it's not all that you are. And notice that day when Jesus invited if Simon chose not to go deeper, there was still another boat. But Simon said, yes. And in his saying, yes, he got a chance to realize what was possible in the depths. In the depths, he went, he did not go alone. Jesus was in the boat. And as long as Jesus is in your boat, I promise you, all things are possible. He went in this boat. And as he went into the boat and he launched out, he discovered some new things. He threw over his net and in throwing over his net, oh my God, what happened? It filled to the masses. It filled to such a point that he could not carry it himself. I want to pause about deeper here for us. A couple of notes for us to take care of. When the Lord calls us to go deeper outside of our comfort zone into a place or a space we do not know, yes, we may not know, but if we go with the Lord, we'll see some things that we could not see in the shallow water. In the deeper water are the possibilities of life. The deeper water holds people, opportunities, experiences that we would have never encountered if we stayed on the shore. Deeper, we see the different colors of the things underneath of the fish, the sizes. The deeper the water, the bigger the fish can be. In deep water, things can grow, things can expand. In deep water, things can prosper in ways that they cannot shallow in shallow water. Sometimes when the fish that are in the deep water come to the shallow, they die. But in the deep water they live. Life is in deep water. I also want to say when you go deep, going deep means you have to trust the one that calls you to go deep. The one that calls you to go deep. And I bet Peter Gillips did and I want us to guess it. The one that calls us to go deep is none other then the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, too, created the waters. The same one that created the cedar and the wood that made the boat. The same one that made it possible for the boat to ride on water and that fish to find life in the water. Do you get the sense of what I'm telling you? The one that calls you to go deep knows exactly what you're going deep. The one that calls you to go deep is asking to use your boat, even though you're not perfect, even though you may not feel like you have all. The one that calls you to go deep doesn't need you, but wants you. And when I say he doesn't need you, you do know he can walk on water. Someone shout amen. So if he can walk on water, yet chooses to get in your boat and wants you to go deep, whose benefit do you think it's for? I would tell you that first, it's for you to understand that with the Lord, all things are possible, but it's not only for you. When you go deeper, you have more to give. You have more to share. You have more to offer. And this call to follow Jesus is never about us. It's always about Jesus and the call of discipleship and the call to be fishers of people. When you go deep, you can share, you need help, and more are blessed. Beloved, I believe it's time for us to go deeper so that we can grasp all that we need, but not to keep it for ourselves, but to share with a world that's broken and hurt, and also to go in those deep places to pull up anyone that is drowning or stuck in their circumstances and to bring them to life. It is time for us to go deep, to experience the abundance of blessings, but to also to see the abundance of need. 
And that's why I end this time with the last part about let's go fishing. Let's go following Jesus unafraid. Once Simon saw this and all those that saw it, they were amazed. Simon humbles himself and said, oh Lord, I'm a sinner. And Jesus was like, look, don't tell me what you are because I'm not looking at just what you are. I'm looking at all that you are to be. I'm looking at the fact that today you might doubt me and might give me a fuss, but tomorrow you are going to be the rock in which I build my church. I'm not looking at today when you might doubt the ability of what you can do or what I can do through you. I'm looking at the fact that you know that I am the Christ and even after you decided that I'm the Christ and you might have left me for a moment. I built my church because on Pentecost day, you proclaim to the world and thousands and thousands are saved. So I need you to know when I say I'm going to teach you to go fishing, I'm not teaching you for this moment. I'm teaching you for the layer point. And beloved, I'm saying to us this day in First Church and anyone who's listening to my voice, that the Lord is calling us to go fishing, to go fishing, catching people, to rescue, to save, to bring them home, to help them see what the Lord can do and to help them also become fishers of people. Because in this world right now, the waters are too murky and they're too filled of racism and chaos. The reason why we have to have Black History Month is because for so long, history has whitewashed us out of it. And it's a time for justice to rise up. It's time for grace and mercy to rise up. It's time for people to be freed. It's time for people to have hope. It's time for people to find life. And it's up to us that will listen to the Lord and go fishing for people that can do this. But if you go fishing for people, you can't go your way. You have to go with Jesus' way. Going fishing, I'm not a fisher. I'm actually a city child. I can say, honestly, I probably have only gone fishing once in my life. Once, yep. And I didn't catch no fish. And my guess is it's probably not like what a fisher friend told one of my dearest friends. My fisher friend, my, my friend, fisher friend told her this. She said, he said, that if you're going to be a good fisher, you have to be in love with your work and be dedicated to the task. You have to have patience. You have to study the habit of the fish. You have to entice and tackle. You have to run and follow the moves of the fish. And you have to have the right bait. Well, church family, if we're going to fish for people, I think we need to be in love with our work. Not exactly love with fishing, but we have to be in love with the Lord Jesus Christ who calls us to be fishers of people. And we have to be dedicated to the task. And we only become dedicated as we continue to keep going with the Lord. We have to have patience. Lord have mercy. We have to have patience and be able to wait upon the Lord and wait upon the fish and wait for times to turn, wait for the right opportunity. We have to study those who we want to bring into the body of Christ. We can't just go with our way. We have to look at those that seem lost and forsaken, those that seem hurt and broken and study them and understand what their need is so that when we go to bring them to life and bring them into the kingdom of God, we can entice them and meet their needs with the right things. The bait that we offer is Jesus's bread of life. Do you hear me, beloved? This day, I say it's time for us to let's go. Let's go and leave it all behind. We need, may not be able to do like Peter and James that day. We may not be able to leave all of our possessions and follow Jesus completely. We're not ready to leave our homes and all the things. But I have to tell you, leaving it all behind is not exactly just leaving your stuff. 
Because there will be times when you got to leave your stuff. Because when you go fishing, you can't take it with you. But sometimes leaving it behind means leaving those old thoughts and ways of thinking. Sometimes it means living those old ways of being and doing. Sometimes it means leaving that what you think you know so that you can gain that what you do not know. Sometimes leaving it behind means just stepping past your five mile radius or past your comfort zones and your circles so that you can be in a new place to experience the newness of God. Sometimes leaving it all behind just means going with Jesus. So beloved, I pray this day that you're ready to go. I pray that you're ready to go and experience all the possibilities and the opportunities because I tell you, 2022 is truly that. Every day God gives us new mercies to see new things. So why do you think God gives us new mercies to experience the same old, same old? I don't think so. I believe the Lord wants us to go. And I believe we want to go somewhere deep down in our souls. So I tell you this, if you're ready to run, run and go with the Lord and keep going and as far as you can go and experience all that God wants you to do and bless and bring some others along. For those of you that are struggling and you want to fuss like Simon, go ahead, just keep being obedient and take one step in front of the other and the one that orders your steps, make sure that they stay righteous and you'll be all right. And for the ones that have yet to know, when we go, we will encounter them and help them to come so that they too can go and follow Jesus. Beloved, let's go. I'm ready. Are you? Amen. 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 Praise be to God. This is a time you have heard the word. You have heard let's go. You have heard, let us go deeper. If today you want to make a commitment to Christ, we invite you to come follow Jesus. His word said, for all have sinned and come short of God, of the glory of God. Although we have done nothing to deserve God's love and salvation, God provides salvation for all who would repent of their sins and believe in Jesus Christ. If you are here on Zoom or anywhere you're listening to this sermon today and you want to make a commitment, he says, just leave it right here and place your heart in his hand and he will forgive you. He said, go with purpose. Let's go, let's go in Jesus' name. Let's dig deeper, deeper, deeper in his word. You've heard the pastor said, let's go fishing. If for those who want just a renewal, Lord who is in Christ already, just put it on the table and he will take care of it. Draw closer to him. Everything is in Christ Jesus. As we go out to make discipleship for him, let's dig deeper. Let's press past our frustration and dig deeper. The God of love, the God of peace, may he continue to bless each and every one of us as we in all the earth praise his holy name. In Jesus we pray, amen. Amen, beloved. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving Lord, we surrender. To you who created the waters, to you who knows us by name, to you who loves us and is ever worthy of our thanks and praise to you, oh Lord, we come. We come this day confessing that there are times that there are things in our lives that prevents us from following you faithfully, but we have a stirring in our heart to wanna to follow you. So Lord, we give you thanks that when we have not been willing, you still have been calling. We give you thanks, oh Lord, that when we didn't know how, you showed us the way. We give you thanks, oh God, when we didn't have enough, you were more than enough. 
And so, Lord, we thank you for all the ways that you prove that you're worthy to go with. And so, Lord, in this next season of our life, of our church, I declare in Jesus, we will go forward with you. We will go ye therefore and tell all nations and we will go, oh Lord, help us as we go. Help us as we go, recognizing that our going is not for us, but it's for all those that are in need. For those that are hungry, oh Lord, help us to go and feed them. For those that are thirsty, oh God, help us to give them the living water that is you, Jesus. For those that are suffering, oh God, help us to stand up for righteousness and to protect. For those that are lost, oh God, help us to go and bring them home, oh Lord. For those that have need, whatever may be, oh Lord, help us dig deep and provide, oh God. And if it is us that are needing, oh Lord, help us to go towards one another and to show each other the way, the truth, and the life, which is you, Jesus. And as we go, oh Lord, we pray that you will stir our hearts with a spirit of willingness that you will open our hearts and our minds and our spirit to be willing to go, put a nudging in our spirit to go with you, O oh Lord, and know that we would never be the same, never ever be the same. Thank you, Lord, for wanting to use us. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for loving and providing us. Thank you for always being faithful to us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for this and so much more. We bless you in Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, as we prepare to come to communion this day, I invite you to go and gather your elements and gather your loved ones as we hear the communion hymn, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. table of grace. As you see, I found my loved one, so I hope you bring your loved one if you have a loved one with you, and I pray you have your communion elements as Deaconess Clarice and I lead you in this sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In ancient days, you created us in your image and called us to be your people. Even when we turned away and, and ignored your voice, you pursued us and called us through the proclamation of your law, the words of your prophets, and the wisdom of your poets and the storytellers. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to call us yet again on the shores of Galilee, in crowded markets and on dusty roads, inviting us to risk everything and to place our trust in you. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their, whole, their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Christ Jesus, who called to his disciples, even as he shared a final meal with them, calling one and all to remember and reflect when we eat the bread and partake of the cup. Take, eat. This is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Drink from this, all of you. This is my life poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of love and grace, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here that we may answer your call to be your people. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and the fruit and vine, that they may nourish and strengthen us to go into deep waters when you call us to take a risk. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ come in final victory, and we feast at your heavenly banquet through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor, all glory is yours, almighty God, both now and forever. And the people of God said, amen. amen. And now we continue by saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive who, those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to take, this is the body of Christ, which was blessed, broken, and given to us. This bread, As you hold it up is the bread of life. 
strengthen you to answer Christ's call. And this cup is the living water blessing you to live in faith and grace. Let us eat and drink as we celebrate our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we will give thanks for this meal that we have just partake of by saying, Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give other, ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, beloved, as we continue and bring this service to a close, there are a few announcements. The first announcements I want is going to actually come from our beloved Sister Keisha from our SPPRC. Please hear her. Good morning, First Church. On behalf of the SPPRC committee, we'd like to recognize two of our staff members as they prepare to depart our First Church community. Reverend Chandler is in the process of relocating to Florida, and Brother Guy will be pursuing a new musical ministry calling. We thank them for blessing us with their spiritual gifts. So the, SS, the SPPRC committee will be planning a formal recognition service tentatively scheduled for March 6th. We will share additional details in the upcoming weeks, so please be on the lookout for more information. Thank you, and have a blessed week. Thank you, Sister Keisha. We're so grateful. As Sister Keisha shared, we're going to look forward to celebrating those two wonderful souls. There are some other announcements that help you grow and serve this week. The first is to know that all worship experience will be virtual for the month of February. However, if you have an activity that you would like to do at First Church, such as fun, fitness, or any of those, if you have proper protocols, you are welcome to gather at the church. Just get in contact with the church office. Also wanna share that we are a praying church. And as we go into 22, Lord knows there are a lot of prayer requests. And so if you put your prayer request in the chat or haven't had a chance to, please do. Because know that our Tuesday night prayer group that meets at seven o'clock or at 716-427-1128. If you, you call that conference call and enter the access code 614-420, you will be praying with some wonderful souls. Or you can join at 6 a.m. the morning prayer line on Wednesdays at 267-807-9601 and enter the access code 998-542. And you will also join them in prayer. Phoebe Joy, for those just older youths, will continue to meet this Wednesday at 11 a.m. So we invite all to join. And Wednesday Night Bible Fellowship begins again this Wednesday night. We look forward to seeing you as we continue our study in Acts. The United Methodist Women will have their meeting on Saturday, February 12th at 10 a.m. They have a different Zoom link, so take note of this. Their meeting ID is 327-371-0195, and their access code is 789. If I said that too fast, feel free to call church office, and we will get that information to you. Also, know that we are continuing our prison ministry. For the past, we have been collecting for the release bags. They have more than enough bags because unfortunately not a lot of women getting released. So our ministry is shifting to what we call prison care packages. And what we are gonna do on February 13th at Memorial White Plains, 
all those that are willing to help pack, we're packing a hundred of the thousand that are gonna be made. So let me say that again. Overall, different organizations are gonna contribute a hundred care packages that are gonna be sent to the women in the Bedford and the Katonic and the Taconic prison. But we on February 13th are gonna join with our cooperative parish and pack a hundred. So if you're free on February 13th, please go to Memorial Church from two to 4 p.m. and let us know that you're going. Also, coming up this week on February 10th, is it this week? No. Yes, it is this week. Pastor lost time for a minute there, forgive me. We have our fresh produce distribution from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. If you would like help, would you like, if you need or would like to help, please contact Brother Gums and Brother Cummings. Know that we are in a season, right now, last I heard, we are feeding more people in this time of pandemic. And so your financial contributions to the food pantry aids us in purchasing the things that we need for distribution. The next pantry distribution will be February 13th at 9.30 a.m. The United Methodist women are at it again. They are doing a paint and sip fundraiser on Saturday, February 26th. If you want to join, all you need to do is see the flyer. It's $40 per person. And the event is on the 26th from 2 to 5 p.m. We hope you join. That closes our announcements for this day. I invite you to hear this hymn as we thank the Lord for all the Lord has blessed us with. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank the Lord for this time of worship. We thank the Lord for having you with us. Beloved, as you go, receive this benediction. As we go to serve the Lord, may we go join closer to the one that calls us. May we press past our limitations. May we go going deeper in the Lord, in the places and the spaces the Lord calls us so that we can go with the Lord to fish for God's kingdom, to bring them to the living water so they all may have life. As you go, may the Lord bless your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Amen. Hear our post by Brother Tamoya.
Amen, amen, amen.